So apparently Lindsay Lohan's getting back into the acting game. She's doing it with a Christmas movie uh, for Netflix called Falling for Christmas, which, you know, isn't really what I would want for Christmas, but to each his own. It may come as no surprise that this movie is very bad, and I wanted to talk about it. So the movie opens by introducing us to Sierra, who's played by Lindsay Lohan, and she's like the spoiled daughter of this really rich hotel owner, and she's staying at this ski resort that her dad owns for Christmas. This resort is pretty sweet. It's got uh, valet parking. It's got a rooftop hot tub. Is that guy kneeling in a hot tub? It's got some... Interesting interior design choices. They have a horse's head on display in their lobby. And Sierra's staying at the resort over Christmas because her dad wants to give her a job at the resort. So next we're introduced to Tad, who's Sierra's boyfriend. He's an influencer, and the movie basically expresses this by having him say the word trending like 20 times throughout the movie. Oh, trending down. Trending. <laughs> so then we meet Sierra's crew. Uh, they kind of do whatever she needs them to do. That's Terry in the front there. Uh, yeah, he'll, he'll become important later in this movie. And they basically do stuff like pick out her clothes. They spoon feed her caviar. They daintily apply her makeup with what looks like an eyedropper. <laughs> She's already wearing makeup. Are you just gonna, you're just gonna put that on over it? So then the movie introduces us to Jake. He's like the main love interest of the movie. And he's there because he runs a smaller resort and he's trying to get Sierra's dad to invest in his resort. But he is not able to convince her dad. And on his way out, he runs face first into Sierra. It's a classic rom-com meetup. I'm wearing the oh, 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 oh my god! I like that it splashed his entire folder, right? There was, you saw the liquid come shooting out of the cup and then there's like a drop of shit on her, on her dress. <laughs> So like I said, Jake owns this smaller resort. It's called the North Star Lodge, and apparently it's completely failing. It's about to go bankrupt, and that's kind of like the main conflict for him in this movie. They made a page called December Reservations, and it's just fucking empty. Maybe that's the point, but like, who are these people in the background? They're just kind of squatting in there. So anyway, Sierra's dad tells her that he's going on a trip, and he'll be back at the resort before Christmas. This dude sure wears turtlenecks a lot. And in the meantime, Tad is going to take Sierra on this like skiing trip, and he almost commits a homicide. <laughs> Holy shit! My lady, your chariot awaits. I'm gonna have to scrape a dead hitchhiker off the front, but there it is. He's colorful. Oh, I think the private assistant likes Tad a little bit there. Wouldn't it be fucking wild if, like, at the end, they ended up together? And it's at this point that we kind of start seeing Sierra and Tad, they, they're not really working together, um, mainly because Tad is, like, dumb as fuck. Do you not know unhook the snowmobile by any chance? Do I look like I know how to unhook a snowmobile? I'll figure it out. Okay, Snowmobile, unhook. I don't think that's voice activated. Oh, I, I guess it was voice activated. <laughs> Anyways, we cut to this scene with Jake's daughter. Uh, Jake had a wife, his wife died. Now he just has a daughter, he's a single dad. That's gonna become important later. But anyways, in this scene with his daughter, she's at this like Christmas festival and she runs into this like really unsettling chestnut salesman. Hot roasted chestnut hook right here, okay. <laughs> Those are fireplace coals, I think. I guess have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he gets just a little bit too excited when she makes her Christmas wish. Let's put it up in that branch. Ready? Yes. Oh, very good. Ugh. I'm getting, uh, I'm not getting good vibes from that guy. He's getting a little too into it is all I'm saying. Anyways, back to Sierra and Ted. They're doing like a photo shoot on top of this mountain. I gotta say, I love that stance, dude. That's that's how any good photographer takes a picture. If you're not getting the squat, how are you gonna get the photo? You know what I'm saying? The lower you go, the better the photo is. Anyways, while they're doing this photo shoot, Tad pops the question. Sierra Belmont, will you marry me? But then all of a sudden, <laughs> Holy sh- oh my god. The fucking earth just opened and swallowed him whole, holy shit. <laughs> Have you thought about like using any of your limbs to kind of slow yourself down or were you just gonna become as aerodynamic as possible there? So while all this is happening, Jake is taking these two kids on like a sleigh ride for some reason. Are you two ready? Yeah, let's go. Is this thing safe? My friend, 
This fine piece of craftsmanship has served the North Star for generations. Where's your sense of adventure? She said that while gritting her teeth. She was like, where is your sense of adventure? Where is it? I told you not to leave it at home. So he finds Sierra and he takes her to the hospital where we find out she's completely lost her memory and also she has a headache. Ow! Ooh. Oh my head. Oh my head. Me when I hurt my head. So through some plot convolutions, Sierra ends up going to Jake's ski lodge to recover and try to restore some of her memory. All right, he went through the lost and found. Not sure if these will fit, but they're better than scrubs. Guess I'll have to do for now. Is that all sweaters? Yeah, I don't think they gave her any other like undergarments. It's all like sweaters and that's it. So over the next couple days, she gets used to living there and she gets closer with Jake's daughter who helps her pick out a new name because Sierra can't remember hers. So what are we supposed to call you? Good question. I don't know. Do you have any names you like? Well, you get up one of theirs. Bro, if you, if you, <laughs> if you let a kid choose your new name, you're not coming out of that with like a normal human name, especially if they're naming you after one of their stuffed animals. I had a green stuffed bunny that I called Green Bunny. So, by the way, I should mention, uh, there's a running subplot that's going parallel to all of this where Tad is like stranded in the wilderness after the avalanche and he like runs into this guy named Ralph, who's like this forest dwelling like prepper kind of a guy. Ralph? Is he wearing a onesie? Did Ralph put him in that onesie? Lovingly drape the onesie on him? Anyways, the two of them decide that they're going to try to make it back to the hotel on foot. So they kind of like set off through the wilderness. It's just a couple days hike through the pass to get to the road. Days? Yeah, depending on the weather. Hey, how about I whip us up some fried fish for breakfast? Sound good? Oh, I don't eat fish. Uh, fine by me. <laughs> get your own breakfast. I would like to see that actually. Imagine how fucking sick it would be if Tad hatchets the squirrel to death from like 20 feet. Meanwhile, back at the lodge, Jake has Sierra doing some cleaning in the hopes that like normal activity will jog her memory. And we get this great compilation of Sierra just being completely incapable of performing basic human functions. Egg? Thank you. Oh! Did you forget like basic motor skills? Oh, oh please don't be stuck. She toilet brushed the toilet so hard that it turned into a fountain. So then Jake gets mad. What is this? And Sierra goes out to the stable to like be sad about it. But Jake is in the stable somehow and he overhears her. Oh, hey there. I'd introduce myself, but I have no idea who I am. I can tell you I'm pretty much a useless human. I can't do anything right. Correct. How did he manage to get to the stable when he was in the laundry room when she left? Is the laundry room connected to the stable? I guess you have to wash the horses clothes too. So anyways, the two of them start to spend some time together and a romance begins developing between the two of them. So one day Sierra walks in on Jake's mom and she's like crying over this scrapbook. Alejandra. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't see you there. Yeah, it's she just walked in. She wasn't there before. And she's crying because her daughter used to love Christmas. Oh, your daughter. She's really beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. You are beautiful. Is the mom hitting on her? This movie is full of unexpected flirtation. So this gives Sierra the idea to save the failing lodge by inviting every person who's ever stayed there to like come back for this big Christmas party slash fundraiser thing. I've got the contacts for almost every guest we've had over the past three decades. You store that information? For 30 years? So then like a big chunk of this movie is everybody getting ready for this big Christmas party. And on the night of the party, Jake and Sierra uh, share a little slow dance. I have a really good feeling about tonight. Isn't weird if I kind of hope nobody shows up? Yes, that is weird. You need the money to save your failing 
ski lodge. I don't know if you've been watching the whole movie, but like, but people do actually show up and then everybody in the entire town brings an identical check and they all chip in to hopefully save the lodge. Well, here's to that time you towed my car out of that snowbank. How did you do that? Do you have a tow truck? Did you do it with your bare hands? But while this is all going on, Sierra's dad gets back from his trip and he finds out that his daughter's been missing for like several days and no one's really doing anything about it. So he goes and finds the sheriff and he orders the sheriff to find his daughter and then he like meets up with Tad somehow and they go and they find Sarah at the Christmas party. Tad, oh, oh, I was skiing and, and, I, and I fell and I hit a tree. The whole town is just like watching this happen. They're just standing in a circle around them. And then Sierra gets her memory back somehow and then Tad and her dad take her back to the hotel. That same guy has been in the hot tub in every establishing shot they've had of the hotel. He needs to get out of there. He's he's killing a sperm count. But while she's at the hotel, she just can't stop thinking about Jake. Jake. The classic flashback to scenes they spent together. And there were like three. And she even retained some of the gritty street knowledge that she got from hanging out with poor people. Just look at her flip this pancake. Wait for it. Good job. You flipped one fucking pancake. You did a did a great job. And Jake's also been thinking about Sierra and he really wants to tell her how he feels. So he and his daughter hop in this fucking sleigh and they just like go off to go find her. Whoa, what is this doing here? Whoa, what is this doing here? So then Sierra tells her dad she doesn't want the job at the hotel. I just, I need to find my own way. I hope you're not angry. Angry? My face is so stuck in this position. I don't think I can show that emotion. And also, I should mention, when she got back from being missing, she like gave this big press conference, I guess, and she shouted out the North Star Lodge in the press conference. So now everybody's calling and making reservations at the North Star Lodge, and the lodge is saved. <laughs> yes, this is the place where Sierra Bell wants to stay. Oh, yes. For how many? Uh, oh. No Star Lodge? She sounded confused when she said it. She f got so many calls, she forgot where she works. So then Sierra breaks up with Tad, and then this wild shit happens. I am so sorry, Mr. Fairchild. <laughs> oh, and at the holidays, too. <laughs> oh. Hey, Terry? Yep. What are you doing for New Year's? Yup. Yeah. What? Bro, I was straight up joking when I said that, but then they fucking did it. So finally, Jake finds Sierra and he tells her how he really feels and they kiss. Well, you know what? Um, there is this holiday tradition, but I bumped my head on the way over here and I, for the life of me, I can't remember what it is. <laughs> it's, uh... Yeah, I think I can help you out with that. <laughs> oh shit, it's gone. You have to go kiss over there now. And that's the movie. What a Christmas, guys. What a Christmas, guys. And the movie ends with one final establishing shot of the hotel where that guy is still in the hot tub. And that guy is still in the hot tub. Excellent. Well, his balls are, uh, are torched. Now, I was actually just going to end it there, but by sheer coincidence, a couple weeks ago, my wife and I found another skiing themed Christmas movie, and it is so much worse. So we're also going to talk about that one. So prepare yourself for the majesty that is Runaway Christmas Bride. So the movie opens with Kate marrying this guy named Alex, but right after their wedding, uh, Kate finds out that Alex only married her in order to get some money from his grandma. I don't really know how that works. The movie doesn't really know how that works either, but that's what we're going with. So Kate runs away from the wedding and her parents are not happy about it. Mom, stop calling. I don't want to talk about it. Kate? It's your father. The dad looks like if Mick Jagger and Melted Ice Cream had a child. Kate ends up going to the ski resort that was going to be her honeymoon destination. Oh, that is, that is an interesting s set of things we have here. It looks like the guys are green screened in front of the lodge, which is green screened in front of the mountains. At this point, why don't you just make an animated movie? And then there's like a five minute scene where Kate is crying and like every employee in this resort is being like really passive aggressive to her and they won't let her into a room because she didn't bring any credit cards or an ID so they have no way of knowing who she is. And then they're like just like yelling back and forth 
And then the movie's solution for this problem is to have this random kid named Mike who was just hanging out at the resort, I guess. He says that he'll show his credit card and ID if he gets to share the room with Kate. And Kate's like, fine, whatever. And then like five of Mike's friends also move in with them. So I guess Mike and his friends were just like waiting at this resort for someone to like forget their credit cards so they could just mooch off a room with them. I, again, don't don't ask me. All right, I didn't write it. So anyways, that night, Kate is just looking into other people's windows when she sees Jason, who's the main love interest of this movie. He's working out with his shirt off next to the window. Okay. Jason is like the ski patrolman for this lodge. That's like kind of an important detail in this movie. And the next day she runs into Jason again on this ski lift and the two of them start flirting with each other. How's your husband? What? You must be enjoying the hot tub in the honeymoon suite. Oh no, I, I'm, I'm not married. That's those guys, the, so I thought that we, um, I'm Kate. Hello, Kate. I am confused. That, that makes, makes two, two of us. us. Oh, holy shit, we actually said the same thing. And their romance begins with the first of this movie's many skiing montages. Mm hmm Yes, I understand the point of that shot of that terrifying 15-foot nutcracker. Was this movie edited in PowerPoint? And because this is a low-budget Christmas movie, there has to be just like a wildly unsettling Santa Claus in it. Oh, uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm just waiting for my- Look, if you don't tell me your Christmas wish, then how do you expect it to come true? Sit, come, come. Oh, you made the classic mistake. Instead of doing this, you should have been running as fast as possible in the other direction. So anyways, after her romantic skiing session with Jason, Kate goes back to her honeymoon suite where her roommates are up to some zany teenage hijinks. Hey. Hey, Kate. Over here. Hey. Jump in. We saved you a spot. Yeah, how about a rain check? I have uh, dinner plans. Righteous yo. Oh God, he said righteous yo so unenthusiastically. I'm s to the actor who had to say that, I'm, I'm sorry they made you do that. It's, it's clear you didn't want to. But don't worry, we could be going all night. It's like the writers never met like kids before. They were like, oh, what, are, what do teenagers get up to these days? They just sit around in a circle and fucking, I don't know, play the bongos or some shit. I just put it in the movie. And then the movie just immediately cuts back to another skiing montage. This is romantic ski montage number two. But in this montage, we find out Jason's tragic backstory. I was on my way to the Olympics and I shattered my kneecap in a million places. Oh my God, his kneecap was a, was fucking powder. It was, it was in smithereens. And then it's right back to the skiing montage. But if you like, I know some fresh snow would cut up. Are they gonna do cocaine? All right. All right. Lover's Lane? Like the adult entertainment store? So the next morning, Kate's sister calls her at the resort and the two of them exchange some great dialogue. Everyone is looking for you. I'm sure. Wait, where are you? Promise not to tell. Come off it, Kate. Come off it, Kate. Natural things human beings say. And then there's this scene. Dude, this scene is wild. I'm I'm gonna play as much of it as I possibly can. You know what, I was right. Your place needs a little bit more Christmas spirit. Let's make some cookies for the carolers with these M&Ms. Are they sponsored by M&Ms? That's yep. a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah, I went, I went really fast. 
they they haven't said like two English words next to each other this entire scene. They have been just making like grunts and like like exclamations. <laughs> and dude, without warning, this scene transitions into footage of this guy sustaining like massive injuries while the cheeriest music you've ever heard plays in the background. <laughs> Oh my god, is that guy okay? They're playing like the triumphant music over it, but I, I think that guy might be dead, actually. I think he broke his fucking spine in a million places. Does this count as the third romantic skiing montage? Because technically the first the first one never really stopped. It's just the whole thing's kind of been that. Anyways, then Kate and Jason go on a date and their chemistry is just palpable. So, no boyfriend? Nope. Crazy X? No. You? Never. <laughs> Sip it. Sip it. She sips it. You ever been married? Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> but then, without warning, Kate's parents and Alex and his parents show up at the resort, and thus begins the family hijinks. I've been using the word hijinks a lot today. So you're telling me there are no rooms left? We are 110 percent full. So We're 110 percent full. I got. Guys who don't even know each other sleeping stacked on top of each other like sardines, all right? So then Kate and Jason hang out some more and they kiss. Do you believe in magic? Shazam. Oh, that was so fucking stupid. <clears throat> Anyways, later that night, Kate is about to tell Jason about her ill-fated wedding but she gets interrupted. Um, there's something I need to tell you. What? I, uh... You need to tell me. <laughs> what is it? What? Bro, imagine... Imagine saying that to someone who's trying to tell you something. They're like, I got something to tell you. Uh, so, and you're like, what is it? What ha What happened? Tell me what happened. What? What is it? You can tell me. So anyway, the next morning, Alex and Kate talk about their situation and Alex offers Kate some of the money that he was gonna get from his grandma if she agrees to at least pretend to be married to him. I'll give you 10%, that's $200,000. You can take a sabbatical, travel the world, finally write your books. He he acts with the same kind of energy as like, a, like people in like middle school acting class. He like puts a lot of shoulders into it. Kate says she'll do it, but only if Alex repays Kate's parents for the cost of the wedding. And then the two announce to their families that they're going to give the marriage a try. Call room service and order a bottle of Christmas cheer. But Kate actually has feelings for Jason. Ah, and just like in the other one, we get a flashback of all the grand old times they've spent together. So then Kate and Alex and their dads go skiing for some reason. Oh no, it looks like he's fucking jogging. This is how I ski actually. And then they get hit by a fucking avalanche, like actually. Oh, it just kind of pushed him out of the way. You okay? There, there's like one foot of snow on the ground. It, I'm. Hey, <sighs> Kate, I'm here. Oh no, she's not even covered by the fucking snow. Should we, we hit the slopes? What? Let's go hit. Oh, the avalanche made her drunk. So Jason takes Kate to the lodge to recover, but then the whole family shows up and they all start arguing. Yes. No! Yes! No! These grave robbers were gonna steal from my beloved mother. That's not true. That's not true. And then things get violent. Do you think I'm gonna hand over my mother's hard-earned savings to a no-good lying weasel like you? And you got another thing coming. Uh, oh, what a surprise. You missed. Well, no, you hit a guy, but... And you. You're no better than he is. Hey, Rick. Ah! No, 
nobody talks to my daughter that way and gets away with it. But then Jason feels betrayed because he finds out that Kate was technically married the whole time. When were you gonna tell me? Some of it I was gonna- A I, revenge I, fling. I'm such an idiot. No, I was gonna tell you that I, Jason, I, I love you. A couple ice packs are needed. A couple ice packs are needed. So then the whole movie culminates in this scene where Mike, the kid from earlier, like the roommate guy, he like hits his head or something and then Jason goes out to save him. But then Kate shows up and she tries to convince Jason to take her back. But then Jason hurts his knee and in the whole time, like the most neutral piano music is just playing on a loop in the background. Jason! This music is very out of place, but that's been kind of a running theme the whole time, I think. Jason, I love you, and we are gonna go get some help, and I'm not gonna lose you! So anyways, Jason is going to be, like, taken away from the resort to recover from his knee injury. You okay? Yeah. Yo, Jason. Thanks for helping me out. It wasn't me, man. Kate? <laughs> Little honeymoon Kate? Yeah. Huh. She's dope, man. She's the one for you, bro. When Kate looks at you, it's like, someone turned on the Christmas light. She's all shiny and happy and just feels right. Someone wrote this script and they probably got paid for it. But Kate enlists the help of like the creepy Santa guy from earlier to chase him down before he leaves the resort. Oh yeah! So anyway, she rolls up and she tells Jason how she feels about him. I want to start over. Please forgive me. You make me happier more than anyone has ever made me happy. And I want to spend every waking moment with you. Please, just one more chance. Come on, Jason, one more chance. One more chance. What, what, what is his investment in, in this predicament? And the movie ends with a flash forward to one year later. <laughs> oh, what? Where we find out that they all lived happily ever after. The thing about reacting to a movie like this is like, it's hard for me to convey how bad that was because if I wanted to accurately portray how bad this movie is, I would have to just show you like, 10 minute segments and that's that's obviously not gonna work. Know that I can't do this movie justice for how bad it is. It's worse than you could possibly imagine and you should watch it. It's amazing to me that like, despite the fact that every single one of these Christmas movies I watch is bad, companies just keep making more and more of them. And it's amazing in a great way. Cause like I looked at the list of Hallmark movies that are coming out this December and there looks like there's gonna be some horrible stuff coming down the pipeline and I cannot wait. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.